everyone, and welcome to the 6.5 Summit AI Unleashed for this channel ecosystem spotlight. I'm joined by my friend, Dan Wensley, the CEO of Global Technology Industry Association, more commonly known as GTIA, on how AI and community are reshaping the channel ecosystem. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Tiffany. So much looking forward to the conversation today and appreciate you having me here. I know we have known each other for a really, really long time, but for those of you who don't know GTIA, let's start there. Maybe you could give just a quick you know, overview of what you guys uh, do and all the great work. Sure. Well, we, we are a, a not-for-profit uh, vendor and member and channel industry association. Um, many would know us from our former brand of CompTIA. Uh, we rebranded under the GTIA moniker uh, just within the last, this year in 2025. Um, and continue our work in driving membership value in the IT global channel uh, and doing a lot of good charitable work along the way to help uh, make sure that we're having a positive impact for the future of our industry. Absolutely. And such a valuable resource for everybody. And, and I think more than ever, it's kind of like I feel like we need it because uh, we have been through a couple of big transitions from you know, reseller to value-added reseller to managed service provider to solution provider to systems integrator to cloud brokerage. Like we've sort of pivoted, 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 and the channel has had to kind of keep up. But we are in this amazing time where, you know, what used to be 18 months might be 18 days or 18 minutes or 18 seconds, how <laughs> quickly the market is moving, especially around AI. You know, as GTIA, what do you think the role of the community and the association is going to play in this next transition because it's just moving so quickly. Yeah, you're, you're so right about the acceleration of the innovation that we're all experiencing. I mean, when I joined this association over 20 years ago, Tiffany, as a member, uh, I came into it because of all of the, the some of the components you just talked about, the speed of innovation and change even 20 years ago, the uh, need and requirement for us to come together as an IT services industry to understand the next evolution of technologies that were impacting us, the new business models that were, you know, paramount to the long-term success of IT service delivery to both small, medium business and enterprise. So the association for me personally was a way to stay as a student of the industry, stay connected, stay educated, uh, work with peers, work with competitors, understand the market uh, better than you can do from your siloed position in any emerging technology organization, which I've been blessed to be a part of over 30 years. It really was a paramount foundation uh, for all of us in the IT services channel to come together and talk about these, these, these evolutions we all went through. You talked about a few of them, reseller to value added reseller, to solution provider, to manage services, to the impact of cloud, obviously cyber, and, and what we're seeing now in AI. And, and you're right uh, that today, and it's, it's interesting to say this 20 plus years later, but uh, today, it might be even more important to be a part of the community and part of the conversation to try to keep pace with this incredible innovation we're now seeing across the globe. And the the pace isn't going to slow down. I was at an event a, a number of weeks ago, Dell Technology World, and Michael Dell is the keynote for this entire summit. Uh, and he said something really that has just stuck with me. And I've said it a couple of times now since I was at that event. And it was like, well, what we know today is going to be almost irrelevant tomorrow. Like how slow we think or how fast we think it's moving today, it's going to be faster tomorrow. Like it's just not going to slow down. And I know that that has been said a couple of times um, in our world. But, you know, from an enablement, from an education standpoint, how are you tackling the fact that it is moving so fast? Because having a conversation is one thing, but like there's a talent shortage in this area because we don't have thousands of people that have great vast knowledge around agentic AI and, and how that's really going to to change the market and the businesses. And so education is big and then enabling this transition, that's also big. And, and I think that's, as you just said, the most important part of what you bring to the, to the industry, but how can you help our community, our partner ecosystem keep pace in, in this time? Well, it, and it's an interesting crossroads as, as there, 
you know, at this stage of our evolution, we are at an we're in, in an arena where information is is arguably readily available. You can get it from multiple sources. Everything's available on the net. The podcast, the the stories around the innovation are are easy to come by. But are you getting siloed? Are you getting the full wholesome picture that you're looking for? And most importantly, I think Tiffany, the ability to sit with a a peer, a counterpart, and and you know, a competitor and understand how these new evolutions are affecting businesses and what, how we're going to apply them to our own business. Everybody's in a different vertical when it comes to the IT services channel. So they want to talk to other channel providers who are maybe are in that vertical that these technologies will impact differently. Uh, much like the days where applications were king, right? You were verticalized inside your IT service delivery model based on the applications that were applicable to the, to the silo of services you delivered or the market that you service. Today, we're going through that same thing, but there's incre increased pressure, there's increased pace, um, and it's all coming very, very quickly. So again, I think the opportunity for us and the requirement for us to stay more connected and collaborative is, is at an all-time you know, pinnacle for our industry. Yeah, and this isn't just about us talking about pace from an ecosystem standpoint, because we think it's really the shiny new technology in the corner that we're talking about pretty nonstop around uh, AI and Agentic. It has everything to do with what customers now need, especially in the SMB segment where the channel ecosystem tends to be the IT resource for those companies that don't have that you know, internal bench of talent, right? They, they've chosen to outsource that part of the business. And so it's really incumbent upon the partners to bring forward to them kind of like first responders, like we know that you are going to be at risk if you're not starting to make these investments. And if, if, if there's any hesitation from the channel at all, it means the end user will have hesitation. So we really need the channel to kind of jump in with both feet. Um, why do you think it is, if at all, in your conversations with so many partners out there, that they may be a little resistant to this next change? Like, ah, we've seen this before. Uh, it's nothing new or nothing different. What, what do you say to those partners? Well, this is what I love about the industry because those partners are few and far between. One of the things that I appreciate uh by you know the necessity frankly around our our industry because it is driven by innovative technology is the appetite for these suppliers these it service delivery businesses to stay knowledgeable to stay in the conversation if they didn't get into the conversation about cloud they missed it if they didn't get into the conversation about managed services they fell behind so there is almost a predetermined requirement to stay hungry for innovation. So it, it's a struggle. Absolutely. I think you're, you're absolutely right. It's they will say, oh, do I need to look at another one? What's what's happening now? And that's why it's so important that we actually get factual about what the impact is going to be and, and how it's being adopted. Uh, but by necessity, they have to stay aware of emerging technologies and innovation and they must pick up the cause on behalf of their customer their customer didn't run to them for cybersecurity. it was really brought to them by innovation and the challenge and the threat of cybersecurity. that was then evangelized by their the it service provider fulfilling their role to their customer saying no this is real i know you're a small medium business i know you don't think you're going to be impacted by by cyber but you are and here's why and i think the analogy you just provided is twofold for the end user, the SMB customer. And that's you know what makes this industry and the IT channel so incredible that they have to pick up you know, th this cause and take it to their customer and really shake them and show them why it's so important. And I, AI is gonna be very much like that. While the theme of this summit is AI Unleashed, I'm gonna sort of lean into a question I've asked a couple of the other guests as well is, you know, there if you could sort of advise someone who goes, you know, I wanna, I want to start a new channel company or I'm leaving my existing channel company. I want to stand up a new channel company. Right. And I say that in air quotes yes. and you, and you could say to them, Oh, like if I were going to start a new channel company today, I would do what, 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 what would you, what would you do if you were to double down and you said all the things, you know, right. You've been watching for a long time. Uh, where would you place your bet? Well, it's interesting. Starting new 
it brings added advantages and some disadvantages. Um, setting up the operational infrastructure of a business is no small task and often overlooked. So the first thing I would do is say, look, are you sure you want to? <laughs> are you sure you want to not, don't just want to innovate inside an existing operation uh, because that typically would be easier than standing up new. Now it does come with some advantages. You can also shed yourself of legacy processes or thinkings or infrastructure that has held you back for growth. So if you're going to do it, be aware of the efforts it's going to take on the administration operational side that uh, you know a legacy incumbent has already in place, but also take advantage of the ability to move arguably more swiftly uh, into just the best in class operational maturity curve uh, rather than trying to you know, adopt or, or evolve into that maturity curve, try to take advantage of that, getting that step ahead. But uh, I think both are viable and both are positive, but they'll come with their own challenges. I agree. You know, uh, I would say data management is one drum I keep really banging on, right? Because AI is only as good as the data. So data management to me, right? breaking down the silos of multiple data sets, right? We've got so many applications in both SMB and enterprises. There's a lot of sprawl. There's lack of integration between those data sets. And if you really are going to maximize what, what Agentic and AI brings to bear, you have to get that right. And that's where I think channel companies have an opportunity to actually use what they sell. I always say to partners, if you're not using what you sell, it's harder to sell it. And so uh, have you seen any really great use cases of partners coming to market with a great, uh, you know, I don't want to just bulk and AI as one big category. It's not like AI is a box and you sell it and it just works. There's so much that goes in it. But actually come to market with something you felt was unique or different uh, or or a great a customer story where one of the partners as part of the GTI community has really been successful. Yeah, and we're, we're highlighting many of those now. And, and, you know, as we're looking to provide guidance and resources for, for the larger community and the membership, you know, the quick guide to AI uh, it reminds me of the quick guide to cyber and the quick guide to managed services. Um, but those are the jumping off points. What, what I think is is really a, a valid point that you make is around data. Uh, you and I had conversations a few years ago about the importance of data. That was a part of our vernacular and our conversation. Uh, and I think it's come full circle. Now it's, it's mission critical importance to really leverage what we're going to see in the opportunity for AI. At the end of the day, it is access of data, the manipulation of that data, and the ability to take that data and, and be more innovative and be more automated and provide maybe autonomic computing for the for, for truly maybe the first time into our industry. We've been talking about it for decades. Is it is it here? So I think in some ways, you know, to our earlier points that we talked about uh, on this conversation, uh, the sometimes we're ahead of our skis on the terminology by years or decades. And, and some of those things you and I talked about and, and you've been so good about explaining to the industry uh, as an analyst are really starting to come to fruition now with with what we're seeing and that's an exciting exciting time because i, I do think it takes time to catch up uh whether it's technology or adoption curve by the customer or or this provider themselves well what i love most about the channel the ecosystem, the partner community, whatever you want to call it, is the fact that it's all about community and connections. And, you know, for those that are watching this that are in it, you know exactly what I mean. For those of you who are watching this that aren't that familiar with it, you know, it is some massive percentage, you know, some vendors are 50% north of 50%, some are north of 85 or 90% of all their technology goes through some part of the indirect channel, whether it be distribution, whether it be managed service providers or resellers or any of the terms that we've tossed out there today. But really that community and connection is what it's all about. And I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that the partner to partner community and collaboration and connection really takes off this time because I think this is an opportunity where partners working with other partners in whether it's coopetition or in an alliance way or really strategically can take advantage of their individual skills and capabilities and then one plus one equals three versus trying right. to go at this alone would you agree 
I, I do. And, and we've talked about these themes for, again, many, many years. You know, managed services was was the first sort of sortie into the ability to expand outside your limited ge geography of where you could drive to to provide IT services. And the ability to do some autonomic computing and some remote remediation provided that, hey, my market can open up. And we talked a lot about in those years about now it opens up the ability to partner with other IT service providers across the globe where you may, or across the geography at least, state to state, or frankly, even globally, to be able to provide the you know, on, on site services that are still a requirement or interaction with the customer, but to be able to own that. So that, that to me was the genesis of the partner ecosystem that did develop, but I think you're right. I think this is going to accelerate that uh, and provide new opportunity on, on even a grander scale. So as we wrap this up, Dan, what, what would be your message to those vendors out there and maybe even partners and, and uh, integrators and ISVs, et cetera, that aren't part of GTIA or aren't taking advantage of everything that the community can really offer? What, what would be your message to them and, and how they could approach um, you and the organization in a way that you know, really is advancing enablement and education around some of these new innovative technologies? Yeah, it's it's really our obligation. I mean, we we have been the best kept secret in many ways in the industry for for a long time. I sat on the board of this organization over a decade ago. I've been a member for 20 years and now we have a renewed sense of responsibility to expand the membership. And we're doing this in so many ways at GTIA with the global communities expansion, with the spotlight awards, with uh, really the resources that we're now developing and delivering into the market. So I encourage everybody to, to check us out. Um, come see the value. I've been a member again for 20 years and, and it's certainly paid dividends for all of the businesses that I've been a part of as well as my career personally. So uh, I think we have nothing but great things collaboratively to do together and uh, come join the community. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dan, so much for joining us for this channel ecosystem spotlight at the 6.5 Summit. Stay connected, everyone, with us on social and explore more conversations at 6.5media.com backslash summit. More insights coming up next.